Hey, what is going on everyone in the XRP community? Hope you guys are having yourselves a fantastic day today as usual. While well, XRP is holding the half dollar level. So, as you guys know, um, the Ripple SEC lawsuit, it's its not over. You know, effectively, we have one, charges dropped against Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. XRP there in of itself, not a security. But there is the one final pending litigation. Um... I don't know if I'm supposed to start throwing the settlement word out there, but based on the news that just came out about a couple of hours ago, that's kind of what it's starting to sound like. Because we do have the institutional sales of XRP, which is still... Ripple is waiting to be penalized by the court and pay some sort of fine for doing so. The Ethereum Foundation, Vitalik Buterin and Joseph Lubin. Oh! Them selling the coin to investors before it even existed. Oh, no problem there. No problem there, Gensler. Yeah, just blind eye Ethereum, everyone. Good God. It's just like, it's funny that just everything they go after Ripple for, it's just like, you could point to other projects such as Ethereum and other things out there where it's just like they did the exact same thing. So why is the SEC not going after them? I don't know. But guys, let's go ahead. Let's look into this because this is kind of, I think portraying the fact that a settle an outright settlement of the lawsuit uh being fully fully done 100 100 complete uh is very very close very very close so check this out from james k phil on twitter xrp community sec gov versus ripple xrp magistrate judge netburn has granted the sec's motion to compel in its entirety got three pages here let's check it out the Securities and Exchange Commission seeks an order compelling Ripple Labs to produce 2022 to 2023 financial statements, produce post-complaint contracts governing institutional sales, and answer an interrogatory regarding the amount of XRP institutional sales proceeds it received after the complaint was filed. Ripple opposes the application. On July 13, 2023, the court resolved the party's cross motions for summary judgment. As relevant here, the court determined that Ripple engaged in the unlawful offer and sale of securities in violation of Section 5 of the Securities Act of 1993 when it made institutional sales of XRP to institutional buyers. Kind of funny, right? So, so Ripple sells institutions, an actual coin that exists, but the Ethereum Foundation wants to come out and they sell their coin before it even exists in the first place, literally creating a contract. They just get the free pass. They get the blind eye. It's funny how that works, right? The parties have agreed that certain remedies related to discovery is appropriate. In setting deadlines for such discovery, the SEC expressed its intent to seek post-complaint discovery, which it believes is relevant to its claims for injunctive and monetary remedies. And Ripple reserved its right to oppose such discovery. Okay, The court has set a February 12th, 2024 deadline to complete such discovery. Okay, let's get to the next one. The court first addresses Ripple's procedural objections. Ripple argues that post-complaint discovery is untimely and barred by the court's discovery ruling in June 2021. On June 15, 2021, the court denied without prejudice the SEC's request to compel production of post-complaint discovery. That ruling was made in the context of expert merits discovery and in light of an apparent agreement by the parties with respect to the scope of the expert testimony. It is therefore not controlling on the court. So it's these 2023, 2022 financial statements that that's the big thing that they are looking for it to be revealed. I've seen comments on Twitter that people are excited about that because those are not fully public to my knowledge and people would actually be interested in seeing with these financial statements. I mean, like how, how big is this ODL? How big is this XRP utility? How much payments are really running through RippleNet, right? So the SEC seeks Ripple's 2022 to 2023 financial statements for purposes of assisting the court in fashioning an appropriate remedy, aka how much Ripple has to end up paying to settle the lawsuit, right? Because they got to pay a fine because out of everything the SEC attacked Ripple for, there's like one little technicality they got them on, which was the sales. And again, <laughs> Ethereum Foundation? Okay, what? They, they did the exact same thing, but even worse, even more against the law because they're selling it before it even existed? I mean, good God here, people. Come on. All right. 
Ripple contends that its financial health is irrelevant to the court's determination because one, Ripple is not claiming an ability to pay any penalty. I mean, yeah, they got billions upon billions of dollars in the war chest, right? And, the, and two, the court may determine an appropriate penalty without such information. Ripple also argues that its financial statements are highly confidential. The district judge, and not this court, will set an appropriate remedy Appropriate. See, you keep seeing this repeating phrase, "appropriate remedy." That that's basically the the cost to settle the lawsuit. I, I'm I'm quite positive that's what it is. I'd like more clarification from perhaps uh, you know Jeremy Hogan, James K. Phil, and John Deaton. But again, I'm not a legal guy. But that's kind of this repeating statement of appropriate remedy. That's basically what they're gonna the final final what Ripple has to pay to put this lawsuit behind them. All right. So we'll set an appropriate remedy based on whatever considerations are permissible and reasonable. At this stage, the court sees no basis to short-circuit that inquiry by denying access to readily available information that may be probative to the remedy stage. Accordingly, Ripple is ordered to produce its 2022 to 2023 financial statements under the party's protective order. Next one, in the final page. Post-complaint contracts. The parties dispute whether post-complaint contracts are relevant to the remedy to be imposed. The SEC credibly argues that the district judge may consider post-complaint conduct when determining whether an injunction is necessary and just. Indeed, Ripple appears to argue that an injunction should not be entered because its post-complaint conduct has been structured in such a way to comply with the court's rulings. The SEC should be permitted to rebut that statement. Uh, the court is not convinced that the production of these contracts will result in an improper or costly mini-trial, according to Ripple, or according, accordingly, Ripple is ordered to produce its post-complaint contracts. Post-complaint XRP institutional sales proceeds. Finally, the SEC argues that proceeds from the pre-complaint institutional sales are relevant to any disgorgement determination. Ripple appears to agree with this statement of law, but contends that its contracts did not obligate the parties to any clear transaction. The controversy before this court is whether to order Ripple to answer this interrogatory uh, and, and not what wait to assign to Ripple's response. Because the SEC has made a sufficient showing that this, this information may assist the court in fashioning its remedy, Ripple must respond to the interrogatory. Accordingly, the court grants the SEC leave to serve one additional interrogatory. The SEC's motion is granted in full. The clerk of court respectfully requested to terminate the motion at ECF number 925. So ordered, and that is February 5th, 2024. Sarah Netburn, New York, New York. That is today. That is fresh. That is in the last couple of hours here. So basically, so what's going on, right? So from the XRP investors' point of view, in our minds, we essentially won the lawsuit, okay? There's a reason the community, you know, pumped the XRP price like 100% in two hours, which is, I mean, I'm not going to say it's the rarest thing in crypto, but I mean, it, it is pretty rare for that to happen within one day, you know, price doubling in one day. Um, when it comes to like the top 10 blue chip cryptos, I mean, that doesn't happen all the time, right? So it's like from the XRP community standpoint, it's like we've already considered that this is done and this is over with and we already won because we basically did. Because the SEC's main reason they sued Ripple was because XRP was a security. The SEC, you know, when they, like, four days before Christmas, they start the lawsuit against us. You know, it, like, it wasn't the SEC coming after Ripple for, oh, hey, these institutional sales you guys did. Oh, yeah, you guys are doing real bad stuff here. No, the SEC came after Ripple exclusively for the fact that XRP in itself was a security. And now that after the long three-year battle... And then the SEC got slapped in the face, in retrospect, and Ripple just outright came out victorious in the thing. Now the SEC, they're going for the low-hanging fruit. That's right. Yeah, they're going for the low-hanging fruit. After the SEC, they lose so many times. They got caught red-handed in court trying to contact Ripple's overseas customers, which have nothing to do with the United States of America. After they caught acting out of line so many times, as the SEC had its own freaking lawyers pulling out of the case because they didn't want anything to do with it. Remember, the guy's name, too, is Mr. Bliss. Mr. Bliss, yeah, he dropped out of the case. He didn't want anything to do with it anymore, right? So it's just like, <laughs> after this whole case, right? After this whole case, this is just the last little low-hanging fruit the SEC is going for. And if that's what it takes to just, you know, have an appropriate remedy for Ripple to completely and outright end the lawsuit, and that will end up broadcasting to the entire crypto space that the lawsuit is officially, officially 100% done and complete, 
maybe that's the best thing we're looking forward to for XRP price. So uh, I'm not going to give any predictions on when this is happening, but um, it sounds like in here, February 12th, February 14th, like there's deadlines and shit like that. So I think that's kind of our next thing to look forward to. Because I, honestly, something I can say uh, with confidence is that on July 13th of 2023, when we had our victory XRP Independence Day and XRP was declared by the courts not a security, which was very big for us, I think the community, we we maybe did over-celebrate and, and maybe we kind of, not saying, not like saying we hyped it up too much because it was definitely, it was something to be hype about. But it's just the fact that, like, the lawsuit wasn't completely over. I mean, on July 13th, we got what we wanted to see, but it was not exactly over. And I think what the markets and what the general crypto space is going to care about is, one, the lawsuit being victorious, and two, being completely done. So I think that is... Not our moon date per se, but something to give kind of confidence back into the market that Ripple is no longer in pending litigation with the SEC. So, guys, yeah, just look forward. Um, I, I think, you know, I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, I don't think Ripple, I honestly don't believe they did anything wrong. They did nothing different than the Ethereum Foundation, which hasn't had a lawsuit against them. But it's just like, um, it's just like really SEC, the low hanging fruit, the, the institutional sales, that's, that's, that's the low hanging fruit you're going over. That's what you're going after. So I don't know if Ripple's going to like actually just whatever penalty they come up with, they'll just pay it and, you know, and just go, you know what? Fine. Screw it. We'll just pay the penalty. We don't care. We just want to start getting shit done in the United States with our partners and not have any weight on our shoulders that's preventing us from having progress in the United States. Or Ripple fights it and they make their own little mini trial, which that's what Ripple was saying. Uh, why they didn't want to release the 2022-2023 financial documents was because they didn't want to have some mini-trial over this whole thing. That then the SEC promised, oh, no, no, there's not going to be a mini-trial, but, God, how can you trust those little fuckers, honestly? <laughs> so, fellas, yeah, um, that's the news for today. A little bit of commentary, a little bit of opinion within that, just because, you know, July 13th, maybe that's why the community's so disappointed right now. I don't know. It's just like, yeah, July 13th was amazing for us. We were not a security. The initial thing that the SEC came after us for, we were victorious in that sense. But the case is still not over. I think that's the reality of today, what we're looking for. So, appropriate remedy. Um, when Ripple comes out with these 2022-2023 financial statements, I mean, Ripple's saying, like, these have nothing to do with, like, paying a penalty. You could just give us the penalty without seeing our financial statements, our highly confidential financial statements. But um, Magistrate Judge Detmer granted SEC's motion to compel. So, guys, the lawsuit is for sure, like, almost done. <laughs> like, like, we know that for sure. It's almost done. Charges dropped against Brad and Chris. XRP is out of security. Now it's just a little, little low-hanging fruit of the SEC going, oh, well, technically, according to Section 5 of this law, you know, you did something wrong. Which is funny because the SEC was not even after the institutional sales in the first place. They were after the fact that XRP in itself was a security. So anyways, guys, enough rambling. That's the news for today. Settlement soon, or AKA appropriate remedy. Make sure you smash the likes on the video. Leave a comment down below. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.